I'm Alan Ross. I'm the managing editor of APC Technologies, and we are here at the NEDA, the International Electrical Testing Association, their 2023 PowerTech conference doing interviews. Um, my guest with me is the Director of Communications for APC Media, uh, Rachel Linky. Rachel, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely, Alan. Would so miss it. We're just going to have an interesting time with all of these people. And tell me what you like best about these interviews. The best part about these interviews, I feel like, is that it really um, brings about a lot of great thought leadership. And I really just love how you make everybody feel so comfortable, Alan. Um, you really try to get people to just be comfortable and in their own skin. And then so much great information comes out of it. So, so let's see if we made people in the next interview comfortable. Enjoy. My next guest is David Huffman. He's the president of Power Systems Testing. And uh, thank you for joining me, David. I appreciate thank you. it. Dave is also on the board of NIDA, so mm -hmm. just give me a little bit of a background for you in the industry. Why did you come into this absolutely d dynamic industry? <laughs> because it wasn't dynamic when you came into it, I bet. You know, um, I started, uh, I knew I wanted to be an electrical engineer in some capacity, okay. whether it was technician or not. As I got through college, I realized I really don't want to sit at a desk all day. And uh, in my last semester, I actually got an interview with the company I'm with now, it's 35, 35 years ago. You're kidding me. No, and no. And was it called Power Systems Testing? Yeah, it sure was. And you, you were interviewed out of college, and yeah. now you're the president. Yeah, yeah. I love America. It's a success <laughs> story. I was, it's, uh, yeah, you know, I think you kind of make your own luck. Yeah. That's something my first manager told me. Yeah. And um, it, it still was a pretty dynamic industry. 35 <clears throat> years ago was different. I was thinking about 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. 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 Because um, we were in a growth then. We were building. We were building. Yeah. Th that's, that's very true. And over the years, it's become sort of a maintenance mode, which is, is still good for us. Yeah. Uh, that does get a, could get a little routine. But we tend to do so many various uh, facilities and installations. There's never a dull moment. Right. So that's a good question for power systems testing. Um, utilities and the whole, whether you're at the muni level, you know, co-op level or all the way up to the IOUs, mm -hmm. industrial, wastewater. I mean, there's so many different ways that, where, where's yeah. the company focus or is it just anywhere you're asked to go? It's really anywhere except okay. utilities. Utilities in our market tend to do their own testing okay. and have, I mean, they're staffed up like a testing company okay. uh, with, with technicians, equipment and all that. And uh, of course, it's a, it's a little bit more sensitive when you're a utility and there are penalties for 1,500 people all of a sudden not having power. Yeah, so yeah. they tend to minimize their risk by doing it themselves. And they're having the same problem that everybody's having, and that is getting the staff to do the testing because yeah. uh, there's a lot of poaching that goes on within our industry, and, and that's not good for anybody. No. I mean, it, it's good for you short term, but you just now created a non-loyal situation over a dollar. It doesn't work long term. That, no, that, no, it doesn't. So I know NIDA, and being on the board of NIDA, I know you're, you're part of this, but NIDA is working with the Department of Labor to create an apprenticeship program, which I love because I think that's desperately what we need. Talk a little bit about that. So the apprenticeship program initially was a, almost a felt a little bit threatening because we're not electricians. Right. That's one thing we're very adamant about. We don't do electrician work. We're not electricians. Um, and if you, you know, to force a testing company to become licensed electricians would really put a burden on a lot of the testing companies on the West Coast. So this new apprenticeship program is really going to benefit us to where it, it makes that electrical test technician uh, more authentic in the eyes of governing agencies such as the Department of Labor. Yeah. When you, uh, well, the, you mentioned utilities have their own testing. Will they use the apprenticeship program, you think? I doubt it. Okay. I really doubt it. They have their own training. Okay, they do that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, it, it, in the industry, and, and that's the power industry, wherever power is made, transmitted, distributed, used, right? 
um, so much is changing in that distributed energy resources, wind, solar, yeah. but so much is changing too. Just with Olin in a substation now, you've gone from electromechanical breakers to um, solid state microprocessing. As all yeah. of that changes, the testing protocols have to change, right? Have you kept up with all of that, or how should we keep up with it? Well, testing companies will need to evolve. Um, and not get completely away from electromechanical devices because they're still there in the legacy installations. But they're going to have to evolve and continue. It's a continuing process improvement yeah. and continuing education. So that's what you'll need. Yeah. And so that requires training. That's yes. why the apprenticeship program is so good. It, it also requires a labor force, and that's another problem that we've got. Not only right now in 2023 do we still have uh, shortages of materials, it's, it's, it's not a short-term problem, it's a long-term problem, but we have a shortage of, of people coming into the flow of technicians, right? Yeah. Uh, why as a career, you chose the career, but you chose the engineering career. Right. Why as a career would somebody choose this path? Um, he, he, this is a commercial for that, for yeah, you to say, to say, come on, join us. Yeah, really, there's never, like I said, there's never a dull moment. It doesn't get mundane. You're always seeing something different. You're learning new things constantly. Uh, it's, it's a great career, and, and the pay is pretty good. For a non-degreed professional, for the most part, right? For the most part, you, you simply don't need a degree. Yeah. What you need is even a, a trade education or community college education where you got some electrical background, some math background, and some maintenance background, which are, those careers are out there. Yeah. I know in Canada, they, they really push the two-year EET degree, the Electrical Engineering Technology, uh, Tech degree, right. which is brilliant because that's kind of right in between the, the, the non-degreed person and the degreed person, but yep. it is a semi-degreed person. I think that's a brilliant move. Uh, let's talk about NIDA a little bit. Uh, you've been a member how long? 35 years? I've, <clears throat> uh, the company I work for has been a member for nearly 45 years. Okay. Uh, they joined in 78 or 9, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So when you joined, they were already, so you were... They were already okay. a part of NIDA. Um, one of the uh, owners uh, was a past president of NIDA. Okay. And then I came up right behind him. And uh, it's, been, it's been a blast. I've been on the board over 20 years. Really? Yep. So, did you ever rotate into the, uh, the what does they call that, the first vice president, then the president? Yeah, the second, that then first, and, and yeah. finally president, yes. Okay. I, I've done all that. Now I'm on the nominations committee. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, talk a little, I mean, that's a, that's a pedigree, that's a history that's there. Talk about where you think NEED is going. When you put the little I in there, it's international now, because I know right. there's some things going on in in the Middle East and in Australia. I, I met an Australian yeah. fellow just yeah. a little while ago, and I'm thinking, you know, welcome to, uh, welcome, mate. And he <laughs> didn't look quite like my accent. But talk a little bit about, about the international growth. Well, the international growth is happening because a lot of construction is done, <clears throat> is designed and specified by American uh, engineering firms. And as such, we've done a, a big push to make these engineering and architectural firms aware of what NIDA brings to the table as far as testing specifications and commissioning. So I think with the international, um, one of the uh, applicant companies already has a few technicians that have passed the exam for level two and three. Okay. So I think we're, we're on a, uh, definitely a growth pattern. Yeah. And I think that it's gonna be good for construction around the planet. Excellent. How long do you continue planning on doing this? Till they kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of uh, a lot of the people in Nita, um, you know, are, are well past what some people would might consider retirement age, but we love what we do. So, it's... I've retired twice before. This is my third career. <laughs> right right now doing this, so I, I understand it. And it, it also speaks volumes to lifelong learning. Yeah. You know, people watch change. As you said, it was dynamic. It got pretty mundane for a while. And now, you know, with the dramatic increase in power, issues with power quality, 
because now you got power quality issues that we got to deal with that we haven't dealt with, um, microprocessing, all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. if, if you're looking ahead, thinking of what's been in the past, looking ahead, what do you think the biggest challenge for our industry is? I think the I think the biggest challenge will be um, keeping up with the power demand. You know, as you have electric cars, electric charging stations. But whether or not we have the backbone to uh, support that on a on a much larger scale than it currently is, to me, is questionable. Yeah. And then the infrastructure there with um, power distribution, power generation, uh, transmission. There's going to be a lot of hardware that goes along with that that somebody's going to need to take care of. And and part of that is that you know when when we do that when we go from a large generation step down to a pretty much step everywhere. You know, power right. goes in and out, creates an inverter-based system as opposed to a transformer-based system. Right. So transformers become inverters. It is going to take a lot of knowledge, a lot of standardization, so we don't have... That's one of the problems, in my opinion, is we've got pockets. We're not like Germany that has a, an authority to say this is what the utility looks like. ERCOT doesn't look anything like East, doesn't look like anything like e West. That's true. Yeah, that creates a set of problems from a utility perspective. And it filters on down to every, whether that's a data center or a wastewater retreatment facility, all of those suffer the consequences, good and bad, of those decisions. But you're right, power demand is, um, they've already expressed that it, um, uh, Bloomberg said that the demand that we predicted for EV adoption is 2x, 2.4x what we thought it was a year ago. Hmm. Meaning it's not just the, the, that we know it's scaling, it's now it's scaling like this. Yeah. And we're not keeping up. And right. that's what we've got to all do. Well, good luck. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you.